Do you prefer homecomings to going aways? Then you should read The Odyssey by Homer. It's a story about a guy who takes 10 years to get home after a party. And one question before we get to the review. Did I enjoy this read? And the answer is yes. Welcome to Whiskey and Literature. I'm your host, Captain Mike, and I'm reading and reviewing 52 books in 52 weeks in 2023. This is my 42nd book review of the year so far, The Odyssey by Homer, maybe. And before we get to the book, let's talk about the author briefly. The Odyssey is attributed to Homer, but we're going back to the 8th century BC. So while he is the Greek poet credited with the Iliad and the Odyssey, due to the fog of time, there is some doubt to whether he actually authored both of these poems. Regardless, he's still considered one of the most influential authors of all time. Okay, on to the specs and stats for the Odyssey. And we are now towards the end of the year. Again, I'm reading 52 books and 52 weeks, including the 50 greatest books of all time. And this is the second book in the top 10 of all time. So this would be the uh, number nine on that list of the 10 greatest books of all time. Okay, there's no original publication date of this poem. I mean, originally it was part of the Greeks oral tradition from almost 3000 years ago. So the book that I have and the audible version that I listened to were both Fagel's translations. There have of course been numerous translations of this book through the years. In fact, the Iliad that I also just read, it had a different translator. And I just about straight up equal parts listened to this book on Audible and turned the pages. I did get my copy of the Odyssey at the Goodwill bookstore. I paid a total of $3 for this book. I think this is one of those books you can always kind of find at the used bookstores and you just have to find the best copy that you can. Probably these are, these are usually read by students and so dog-eared and maybe written uh, within the book. So mine's 483 pages long. And the audible version that I listened to, it's uh, narrated by Ian McKellen, you know, Gandalf, for 13 hours and three minutes. Okay, on to the style of the Odyssey. And while the Iliad was about rage. The Odyssey, it's about homecoming. The cadence and the rhythm are somewhat similar to the Iliad for those who have read it, but the Odyssey is kind of on a much smaller scale in the sense that it's more individualistic as opposed to just an all out war. And what I mean by that is that uh, there is, instead of large cast of characters with a lot of moving parts, there's only a few main characters that everything is related to. Some of the themes are homecoming, and that's preceded by wandering. And something I've never said before on a theme of a book is guest friendship, which kind of makes sense because this was used as a teaching tool in antiquity. And omens are a motif that are repeated throughout the poem. Okay, on to the characters of the Odyssey. And first, of course, Odysseus or Ulysses in Latin. He is the king of Ithaca and he participated in the Trojan War which lasted 10 years and it took him another 10 years to get home. Then we have Telemachus, Odysseus' son who is teetering on the brink of manhood and is still in his absent father's shadow. Penelope, she is the wife of Odysseus or the widow of Odysseus. She is desired by all the single men in Ithaca, or at least 108 of them. And of course, the last main character is the gods, picking their favorites, meddling in human affairs, vengeful, powerful, and capricious. Okay, on to the plot of the Odyssey. And this poem is divided into 24 books. Okay, books one through four, we have Telemachus and Penelope, and they are beset by suitors seeking the hand of the queen in marriage. And they're basically camping out in their house, eating them out of house and home. So Telemachus, he leaves and goes to try and find word or news of his father or find his father. Okay, books five through eight. So after the Trojan War ends, 
Odysseus is being held captive for seven years by the nymph Calypso. She's ordered by Zeus to release him. He leaves on a raft, which angers Poseidon. He destroys it, and Odysseus ends up on an island. It's an island of the Phaeacians, who agree to get Odysseus back to his home. But we spend the next five books of the poem uh, discussing the adventures that Odysseus had had before arriving there. So nine through 12 are those adventures. First, the Lotus Eaters, and then they end up on an island where the Cyclops lives. Odysseus and his men get trapped into the cave and he begins to eat Odysseus' men two at a time until Odysseus blinds the Cyclops and they escape under the belly of sheep. So they almost make it back to Ithaca and the winds come up and they get driven back. Half the ships are destroyed and they end up on another island and half of Odysseus' men get turned into swine by the witch Circe. Odysseus saves the day and they sail away to the western edge of the world where Odysseus is able to talk to his dead mother and some of his dead comrades from the Trojan War. Books 13 through 20, the Phaeacians do indeed return Odysseus to Ithaca and he is confused about where he is until the goddess Athena tells him he is indeed in Ithaca. All right, books 21 through 24, slaying the suitors, the climax of the entire story. There is a contest to win Penelope's hand in marriage, and this involves stringing Odysseus's bow. And he is the only one who is strong enough to actually string that bow. He wins the contest, and now he is holding on to his bow with some arrows, and he and Telemachus and two others, they slay all of the suitors. Then Odysseus tests Penelope to make sure that she was faithful and Penelope tests Odysseus to make sure that he is Odysseus and they lived happily ever after. Okay, so that was a very brief synopsis of the plot. And so here are my thoughts on the read. First of all, I think this was a great book and I really enjoyed the Fagel's translation, the cadence and the rhythm and the flow. I would like to go back and read the Iliad, and I'm going to, and I'm going to read Fagel's translation to see if it's more like this copy of the Odyssey than the one that I read earlier, and that one was done by Stanley Lombardo. Second, definitely read about the story before you turn the first page. This is one of those reads that you really benefit from knowing the outline of the story and what's going to happen before you read what happens. If you for some reason have to choose between reading the Iliad and the Odyssey, I would suggest you read the Odyssey. It is a more complex story with perspectives changing several times during the read. And with Odysseus journeying home, the location or the setting also changes uh, very frequently as opposed to the Iliad where we're just outside the walls of Troy for almost the entire story. One of the things that I'm really enjoying this year as I'm reading these 50 classic books is when they reference one another. And in this book, I caught a shadow of Gulliver's Travels, which of course came much after. So Gulliver's Travels would have been referencing this book as opposed to this one referencing Gulliver's Travels. But there's a point in Gulliver's Travels where he is talking to the dead people. And there is a time in this Odyssey when Odysseus is summoned to the spirits, or he's summoned to the spirit. I, honestly, it was just a little bit confusing, but he talks to his dead mother and he talks to his dead comrades from the Trojan War. And Gulliver, he talks to, and I think, I think this was awesome, he talks to Homer in Gulliver's Travels. And I thought that was awesome. So you have a little bit of shadow of kind of the same thing happening. Obviously, Tom, Jonathan Swift had read the Odyssey. It is much slower to bring the violence, say, than the Iliad, but when it does, it is swift and brutal. Three especially violent episodes in the book stand out in my mind. It's in the Cave of the Cyclops, the Slaying of the Suitors, and the Hanging of the Housemaids. So, the Cyclops is out, and Odysseus and his men find the cave, they go inside, and they make free of the inside of the cave, eating his food and drinking his drink, 
and the Cyclops, after he does whatever it is that Cyclops do, I think he's hurting his sheep, he comes back into the cave, puts his big rock in front of the cave so no one can get in or out, and he discovers Odysseus and his men, and he just picks up a couple and plops them in his mouth, and this goes on for a while. It's just kind of casual violence. He just picked up a couple men and just ate them. I thought that was just the casualness is it really the words I can think of, of that, of those quick deaths. And I think how awful that would be. It really just stuck out in my mind. And somehow, and I have never ever read this book until a couple weeks ago, but that story of the Cyclops did somehow seem familiar to me. Okay, slaying the suitors. This is, if you will, the climax of the book. Now the Iliad is about rage. This is about homecoming, but rage is unleashed in this chapter. I try and I try and imagine this scene in my mind. Four guys against 108. Bows and arrows, shields, swords, spears, and knives. Up close and personal. And then they slay, hack apart really, the servant women who had whored with the suitors. And the last suitor, he had his ears and his nose cut off, his genitals cut off, fed to the pack of dogs, and they ended with his cutting his hands and his feet off. And he just left him and went back and had dinner. So while it does definitely pale in comparison to the amount of death and violence found in the Iliad, it is there, front and center. And I get why this was used as a teaching tool in antiquity. Greek morals, they were found throughout the poem. And again, to contrast with the Iliad, there were many more characters in this poem that the common people could identify with. Women, slaves, maidservants, and swineherds. I did read this in three days, which I don't recommend. It deserves to be read at leisure. I did have to reread some passages, but once you're in the flow, it does go fairly well. But you should allow yourself some time to be able to research and look at other things that complement the story while you're reading it. Overall, I really did enjoy this read, and I'm definitely going to return to Homer in the future. All right, guys, on to the star rating, and I judge all books on five criteria, six if I read them on Audible, and let's get to it. And this is a response, how do I feel as soon as I have finished the book? And I gave it a four. Recommendation, how likely am I to recommend the book? Also a four. Style, did I enjoy the writing style? I only gave it a three. Plot structure, how engaged was I in the story? Four. Characters, were they relatable, believable, engaging? It got a five. And Audible, for those books I listened to, how was the production? It also got a five. Come on, it was Gandalf. All right, that's 25. And 25 divided by six is 4.16 stars for the Odyssey by Homer. I think it probably should be higher, but I think that's a pretty good store. All right, guys, thanks for sticking with me. If you enjoyed the video, like it, subscribe to see more of my content. I do both book and whiskey reviews. Again, I'm reading the 50 greatest books of all time this year as determined by an algorithm. And in the description below will be the links to those reviews. If you're interested, check it out. But for now, you know what to do, my friends. Turn the pages and stay thirsty. Cheers.